I'm Brittany Director and joining me today is Mike Chrome. It is June 19th, 2011. Thank you, Mike, for being with us today and sharing your memories. Okay. Where and when were you born? Born in Baltimore City, 1940. And what town did you grow up in? In Baltimore. What was life like as a child living in your town and in your neighborhood? Not abnormal for the time. It was a nice neighborhood in uh, northwest Baltimore, and um, I have pleasant memories of it. Nothing too traumatic happened. Do you remember having neighbors of a different race? I don't believe that we did. Remembering uh, 1940s and early 50s was still fairly segregated. Even in Baltimore. Yeah. Do you remember having friends of a different race? Not at that time, no. What was it, the integration of schools like? Well, I think the Brown ruling was like in 1954, 1955. Uh, about that time, I was going into high school and I went to uh, Baltimore Polytechnic Institute, which mm -hmm. was like. Uh, an all-city high school that you could go to. And that had been segregated well before the, the Brown ruling because it was an all-city high school. So in high school, I had uh, black classmates. Um, and again, it was, you know, it was unremarkable at the time. And we were brought up without any real discrimination. None of that really existed in our household. So your schools were racially diverse? High school. Prior to that, it, it, wasn't. it really wasn't, no. Okay. And then what year did you move to Carroll County? Carroll County we actually moved to in, uh, we we bought our farm here in 1985 and moved in in the spring of 86. Mm -hmm. And what town in Carroll County did you move to? We, uh, we're not actually in a town. We're in Westminster Post Office. We're, we're about halfway uh, between Westminster and Taylorsville in a rural area. Was it extremely different for you living in Carroll County than in Baltimore? Well, by the time I was 18 and graduating high school, we actually moved to Baltimore County, Woodlawn. Um, but even then, we lived in a housing development, so it was extremely difficult or different for me to, uh, and uh, until the time that I got married, which was <laughs> 1966, and. Uh, uh, lived on a farm in Baltimore County for some years prior to coming to Carroll County. But so each stage, I get a little further into the rural atmosphere, uh -huh. and uh, so it really wasn't difficult to transition. It was really quite good, in fact. What about the transition with the people? Uh, by the time we moved here to Carroll County, I had. I uh, in, in 80, 85, 86, I had already uh, been with the state police for a number of years and had served in various parts of the county and in fact had spent a couple of years in Carroll County. So there, there wasn't any difficulty adapting. How many years did you serve as a state trooper? Uh, 31 years. And how many years in Carroll County, and what years? I was promoted to corporal in 1969 and transferred to Carroll County from Baltimore County mm -hmm. and was in Carroll County for about two years before I was promoted to sergeant and went up to the Kennedy Highway. How did Car working in Carroll County compare to working in the other counties? 
Cal County was a really good place to work. It was at that time, 1970, mm -hmm. very rural. Uh, the people were very much pro-police and pro-state police, and you were treated very well, and uh, it was a pleasant place to work. Uh, I enjoyed it very much. So what was it like to be a state trooper during the times you were, and specifically one working in Carroll County? Specifically in Carroll County? Mm -hmm. Well, if you put it in perspective, I came here in 1969, mm -hmm. which was kind of the end of a very, very hectic decade uh, that involved the sit-ins and riots, race riots, and the Vietnam War demonstrations and riots, uh, which had been very hectic. So when I came to Carroll County, Cal County was not a largely segregated county. I mean, there were groups of, uh, there were small black communities in the county that had been here for years. Uh, but the county was just beginning to change and absorb all of that. So it was a lot quieter here after all of that turmoil that I had been in. Yeah. Uh, did you ever work with people of different races? And if you did, how did this make you feel? Uh, well, as, as time went on, the state police changed along with everybody else and everything else. So, uh, we did recruit minorities and females all through the 70s and 80s and on from then. And so, yeah, I helped to train some of the newer black troopers that came on the job. and worked with them throughout the rest of my career. I didn't retire until in the 1990s. Mm -hmm. So uh, worked extensively with minorities over time. And in fact, at the time I retired, uh, I was a major in the state police and was the director of personnel. So I was responsible at that time for the, the hiring and recruiting of, of minorities. Did you ever have a higher standing officer of a different race? Not in the state police. Uh, I did do a, uh, also in the 60s a stint as a, in the National Guard. And I still fondly remember my basic training and a, and a first sergeant whose name was Tinsley, uh, who was our first sergeant uh, of the training company. Uh, I enjoyed very much uh, the experience of working with him. And he definitely was the boss. <laughs> when attending court as a state trooper, did you feel that all races present were treated fairly? For the most part, yes. Mm -hmm. And have you seen a difference in the patrol force from when you were on it to present day? Well, it's just further progressed and it's further been more totally integrated and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, sure, it's changed like everything else over time. Yeah. Do you feel that the Carroll County government does a good job promoting diversity and equality in the past and nowadays? I don't ever see it as a big issue in Carroll County. Mm. And, uh, I, I know the schools are good at what they do, and, and uh, I, I've never really seen it as a, a big political issue in the county. Uh, there is still, it is not overly represented by minorities as other metropolitan, more metropolitan areas are, but that's changing with time and the growth of the county. Mm -hmm. which has grown hugely since I was here, working in, uh, in the late 60s and early 70s. How has Carroll County changed over the years in terms of not only a place to live, but also diverse-wise? As a place to live, it's, it's still primarily a rural, conservative county. For the most part, there's a great deal of cooperation with uh, 
police and people. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sure, there have been changes, and as the, the county grows and uh, very much expands in terms of the population and in terms of the localities, uh, that I can remember there were no chain restaurants and there were no big box shopping places and you know that it was very very royal so as that changed and there's interstate 795 and so on that's you know it's become more metropolitan but that's still happening and that's still a changing thing yes. what are some changes that you would like to see happen not only for Carroll County but for your town also That's a hard one to answer. I, I, I don't know how to answer. <laughs> uh, I'm less conservative than the the, the the bulk of the government of Carroll yeah. County, so I'd I'd like to see some more moderate. Uh, policies go into effect, but I don't know that that will happen in my time. Yeah. So, but as far as the rural character of the county goes, I'm very much in favor of protecting that to the greatest extent it can be protected. Okay. Do you have any last closing remarks you want to make? Carroll County is a good place to live. I, I'm really not aware of any serious diversity problems in the county. Uh, uh, this is how I'll spend the rest of my days, I guess. <laughs> well, thanks again, Mike, for sharing your memories with us today. That's okay. I'm glad to help you. <laughs>